Hi friends, I am Dr. Sharma and this is the first video of a series of videos on urethral trauma. I will be discussing here etiopathogenesis of anterior urethral injury. The objectives of this particular talk are to discuss the brief anatomy of urethra, to discuss the causes of anterior urethral trauma, the pathology of anterior urethral trauma and importantly the natural history of untreated urethral trauma. Now the anatomy of urethra is different in a male and a female. In a female it's a short urethra which is about 4 cm in length and is less susceptible to trauma. A male urethra extends from the tip of the penis to the opening into the bladder. It is about 18 cm long. It is divided into an anterior urethra and a posterior urethra and this division is at the level of the perineal membrane. The posterior urethra is nearly 3 cm long and it consists of the prostatic urethra which is 2 cm in length and the membranous urethra which is about 1 cm in length. Now the most important thing to remember is that the membranous urethra is the only segment of the urethra which is not protected by the spongy tissue or the prostatic stroma and hence when there is a trauma it is the area which is most susceptible to injury. Now coming to the anterior urethra it is divided into the penile urethra which is a mobile part and is also called as the pendulous urethra. It extends from the meatus till the penoscrotal junction. The bulbar urethra extends from the penoscrotal junction to the membranous urethra that is where the perineal membrane starts. How does an anterior urethral injury occur? It can be because of blunt trauma, penetrating trauma or it could be an iatrogenic injury. The anterior urethral injury most commonly involves the bulbar urethra. It is affected in about 85% of cases. This tends to occur because it is an area which is fixed beneath the pubic bone unlike the more mobile and free pendulous or penile urethra. Penile urethra because it is mobile is least likely to be injured and the commonest causes of penile urethral injury are either a penetrating trauma or a sexual misadventure or an iatrogenic trauma. Now the two types of injuries which can cause a in uh, damage to the bulbar urethra are a straddle type of injury or a kick to the perineum. Now basically as I had mentioned earlier it is the bulbar urethra which is the fixed part and whenever there is an external force which is affecting that area it crushes the bulbar urethra against the inferior pubic rami. Because this is a localized area where the injury is affecting the bulbar urethra and the force is acting against the pubic rami, there is very little chance that the associated organs will be affected. Many of these patients in fact neglect this injury and present late with strictures. Itrogenic urethral injury. In fact, you would be surprised to note that I feel that the commonest reason why a urethra is injured is iatrogenic reason. Traumatic catheterization done in an improper way is probably the most common cause of an iatrogenic urethral injury. And I would request the viewers to look at our video on a proper urethral catheterization. Traumatic removal of catheter. Endoscopic procedures because they involve insertion of a rigid instrument into the urethra and in these cases the injury most likely to occur is at the level just proximal to the perineal membrane because this is the area where the urethra tends to curve upwards and the pressure that is exerted if it is improper and undue pressure may injure the urethral epithelium at this level. An area which is often overlooked is ischemia during extracorporeal circulation in cardiac surgeries which often results in strictures especially in the region of the navicular fossa. Now, penile fractures can also be associated with anterior urethral injury and the incidence is about 10 to 20 percent. The interesting part is many of these patients are able to void well despite a urethral injury with no much urinary extravasation 
and this is because the hematoma in that area blocks the uh, area where the injury has occurred and so the urinary extravasation does not occur sometimes penile amputation self in inflicted by uh, mentally deranged patients or insertion of a foreign body due to mental illness or autoerotic purpose can also cause urethral injury penetrating trauma of course would damage the urethra now we would see the pathogenesis of anterior urethral injury now for this we need to understand that the anterior urethra in fact lies directly on the corpus spongiosum and this spongiosum is surrounded by the bucks fascia which means that the urethral epithelium is not supported by a layer of muscularis mucosae or any other sub epithelial structure there is the urethral epithelium and the spongiosa around it now when there is trauma there is breach of the urinary epithelium because there is breach of the epithelium the extravasation of urine will occur and because there is no other supporting layer the extravasation will occur in this corpus spongiosum now this extravasation will spread along the spongiosum or if the bucks fascia which is then surrounding the spongiosum is breached then the extravasation will occur outside the bucks fascia now outside the bucks fascia the extravasation is limited by the colles fascia the colles fascia is attached laterally to the ischiopubic rami and posteriorly to the perineal membrane so the extravasation will be limited posteriorly by the perineal membrane and when it will increase it will increase anteriorly more towards the scrotum and penis deep to the darter layer now if it is still untreated it will then extend upwards alongside the spermatic cord on either side of the anterior abdominal wall and it will then go upwards on the anterior abdominal wall but it will not extend laterally and downwards into the thigh because of the attachment to the fascia lata now the tissue damage then starts occurring the tissue damage is on account of two reasons extravasation of urine and the infection then uh, sets in later on the extravasation of urine initially causes pressure this results in thrombophlebitis further it causes obliterative and arthritis which of course will lead to ischemia and then to gangrene and once infection sets in it will cause bacterial necrotizing fasciitis so what determines death in urethral injury the primary determinant is extravasation the secondary determinant is infection and the third determinant is delay in treatment and in fact in today's world this is the major reason why a death may occur we need to remember a rule of 2 and in these circumstances after 2 weeks of extravasation of sterile urine secondary infection sets in and after 2 weeks of infected extravasation death is inevitable and this tends to occur if the anterior urethral injury with associated extravasation of urine is left untreated thank you the second part will discuss the etiopathogenesis of posterior urethral injury for more such videos log on to admedonline.com